Hello everybody, Jim here, and welcome to a new installment of an old series, Star Citizen Explained, without the numbers. The idea for this series is to scour official CIG marketing material and video transcripts to explain a facet of Star Citizen using lore, flavor text, and the words of the developers themselves, because numbers are subject to change and they will break your heart. <laughs> anyway, today's topic is exploration ships. To understand the role of exploration ships in Star Citizen, it might be best to start with the goals of exploration itself. There are essentially three components to exploration. Travel, learning, and not exploding. Each exploration ship is geared towards two of these aspects with a half-hearted pass at the third. Let's take a look at each exploration ship from the cheapest to the biggest, most wallet-bustingest behemoth. First is the Aurora ES. This is the starter ship, and in my humble opinion, still one of the coolest looking ships in the game. The upside is that it's incredibly cheap. The downside is that it's incredibly cheap. It has a bed so you can set your spawn point or whatever before logging out, and it's a spaceship, but that's about all there is to recommend it. As the cheapest starter ship, it is intended to be slow, poorly armed, maneuver badly, and make you feel like you have an honest-to-gas spaceship while simultaneously making you want to get something else as fast as possible. There's no expanded fuel capacity, sanitation facilities, enhanced scanning capabilities, increased weapons potential, tractor beam, or internal storage, and, at the time of this video, it is one of only two solo exploration vessels, both are Auroras, that aren't equipped with a jump drive, so you'll be trapped in your starting system unless you can have one installed. In short, all you can do with this ship is get a closer look at the things in your own backyard. As it happens, you can buy a similar kit right now on Amazon. The Aurora LX is also touted as an explorer, but it's basically the same ship with two notable additions. There is a missile rack, so the LX is slightly better at not exploding, but more importantly, the description states that it has a patent leather interior to guarantee comfort for those long stretches in the deep black. So, you should be slightly comfier. Unless you explore a humid planet, then your back will stick to the seat. Next is one of my favorites, the Mustang Beta. This one costs a tiny bit more, but the marketing material promises a longer range and the amenities are fantastic. I don't believe there is a ship better suited to single-person transportation than the Beta. Like the TARDIS, this thing's bigger on the inside. In a space the size of a large closet, you get a toilet, shower, sink, microwave oven, food storage and preparation facilities, multiple small closets, a couch, a desk, a work slash entertainment terminal, a bed, and throw pillows. It's also intended to be better armed, faster, and more maneuverable than the Aurora, which seriously decreases the likelihood of unwanted explosion. Plus, it has a jump drive so you can leave your home system. Still, you don't get improved scanners or research equipment, so all you can really do is get out into space and back again in comfort. This feels less like a backyard explorer kit and more like some teenagers in a van skulking around with a flashlight. Come to think of it, it even shares a similar color scheme with the mystery machine. By contrast, the 315P, in addition to having some living facilities and expanded range, comes equipped with a tractor beam and improved scanners. Right now, the living facilities consist of a lightly padded bench for sleeping, so it's nearly as comfortable as a folding chair but it is in the middle of a redesign and it has about three times the potential interior space of a beta, so I'm excited to see how this one pans out. It's likely to be fast, maneuverable, fairly well armed, and has the possibility of expanded weapons by way of a slot for wing-mounted missiles. For solo players who want to see every nook and cranny of the Star Citizen universe, this may be the best ship you can get. Considering the rough and tumble equipment combined with the luxury marketing, this one feels to me like a gentleman explorer's jungle encampment. All right, lads, off to the source of the Nile. Well, after tea, of course. Meanwhile, the Reliant Sen is a versatile, modular, small-scale science platform capable of mounting cameras, sensors, tractor beams, and weapons on exterior mounts. It also has interior space for a living quarters, a research station, an airlock with EVA suit locker, and an extra seat in a cockpit which allows a partner to manage systems and delicate operations while the pilot, um, pilots? <laughs> On the whole, the Sen is better at figuring things out than finding them. You could think of it as a mobile lab for a serious researcher. 
The Freelancer Durr is a little like a beefier, sturdier version of the 315P, with heavier weapons and more cargo space. It doesn't typically explode. It causes explosions and walks out of the flames unscathed. It has expanded fuel capacity, advanced scanners, a strong hull, big guns, a bad attitude, and the inclination to grab science by the short hairs and drag it back to less adventurous researchers while it rides off into the sunset with the girl. If the Durr was made to knock science out with a fist to the jaw, the Cartoo Owl wants to sneak a peek while science is in the shower and get out while the getting's good. Lightly armed and shielded, with no real scientific equipment or special long-range capabilities, the Jean Scout was made for one thing. It flies really, really well. Most ships can't catch it, and almost none of them can outmaneuver it. It's fast, it's red, and it may well be gone before you even know it's there. The Constellation Aquila is the first serious multi-crew exploration ship. The Dura made use of a second crewman, mainly to man the rear turret. The Aquila has positions for up to four crew, including pilot, co-pilot, turret operator, and parasite snub fighter pilot. Most of the cargo space is filled with an armed and armored rover for land excursions, so you're ready to go when the Aquila touches down. Even so, it is still a modified cargo vessel that also happens to be suitable for exploration, so it lacks some of the amenities one might expect from a long-term self-sufficient exploration vehicle, like the Anvil Carrack. This ship is what the Aquila would have been if it had been designed for exploration from the start. You can expect a bigger, better rover and parasite craft designed to explore rather than fight. It comes equipped with medical equipment and repair facilities, and there's a section dedicated to replaceable modules which could conceivably house cargo, research facilities, additional crew quarters, or anything else CIG decides to design. This is a versatile, self-sufficient exploration craft capable of traveling anywhere in Star Citizen and returning to tell about it with minimal chance of explosion. I see this as the nearest anybody in this game will get to the Starship Enterprise. Finally, we have the mother of all researchers, the MISC Endeavor. Taking modularity to ridiculous extremes, the Endeavor can mount multiple modules simultaneously in a number of standard ports. You can mix and match expanded fuel tanks with a Hubble-like telescope, medical facilities, data crunching centers, research laboratories, crew quarters, biodome farm pods, and for some reason unknowable to the minds of mortal men, an atom smasher. And if that isn't enough optional equipment, you can also mount a hangar capable of carrying a couple of Auroras, Mustang Betas, 315Ps, or any combination of ships smaller than a Cutlass for those times when a super collider alone just won't do the job. And while all of these modules and secondary spacecraft are off doing their own thing, the bridge of the starship can leave them all behind to go exploring with its own super awesome energy shielding that allows it to get up close and personal with stars. The downside is, like a man at the forefront of scientific achievement but lacking in any understanding of the cruel, inhospitable nature of the universe, the Endeavor is a pudgy target that will be eaten by the first Dilophosaurus to notice his existence. Or it could explode. Whichever comes first, it's a crapshoot, really. Anywho, this is not a complete list of explorers, and you may find great exploration success with other industry-specific tools like the communications equipment on the Drake Herald, the visual recording and broadcasting equipment on the Reliant News Van, or the combination of stealth and firepower found in the Hornet Ghost. Star Citizen has a plethora of options to suit any gameplay style. For example, I tend to do my exploration from a 350R in the hangar of an Idris, surrounded by Javelin destroyers, because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to go wherever I want and be sure of a clean getaway in the unlikely event that things go wrong. That does it for exploration ships. But if you want to watch the original without the numbers on cargo ships from about a year ago, the link is in the description. If you do watch it, leave a comment to let me know if you'd like to see an updated version, because some of that information and the editing is pretty old. For now, thanks to everybody for watching, subscribing, and commenting. You guys make this fun, and I will see you next time.